Hello, I'm Grim Grindu, and welcome to this either very late Wednesday video or very early Thursday one. We ran into some technical difficulties, but chances are if you're watching this video and you're not me, it has now found its way onto YouTube and VidMe. So, welcome! So, since we're already running a little bit behind schedule, let's just get on with it. Either yesterday or two days ago, depending on what day it is now, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which is the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and thought I might do a little bit of an initial reaction to it. Say, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It is possibly the best Marvel movie since Guardians of the Galaxy 1. I'm not entirely sure. I'm starting to lose track of what Marvel movies have gone up now. Ant-Man was pretty good, but you get the gist. It's a very good Marvel movie. And it's a very good sci-fi, and it's a very good comedy. But let's get down to the specifics, but not too many of the specifics, because this first part of the video will be spoiler free, and then I'll give a warning before we get down to the spoilers. So, firstly, the comedy. I think we can all agree, one of the best and most refreshing things about Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, was just how darn funny it was. And luckily, this movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, is itself also very funny. There's, as you might expect, the wonderful back and forth banter between Chris Pratt's character Star-Lord and pretty much every character in the entire movie, but on top of that, many of the other characters got a lot of laughs in their own right. I would say one of the biggest surprises would be Drax, who had a lot of funny encounters with the new alien creatures with the antenna that you see in the commercial, and, well, lots of those encounters basically had the entire cinema rolling around in laughter. So they definitely managed to maintain the level of quality that we came to expect having seen the first one. And now moving on to the action portion, which, if you're a fan of any Marvel movie, you probably have pretty high expectation for, because Marvel is pretty darn good at delivering pretty exciting spectacles. And this movie doesn't let you down in that department either. We have really cool space battles, we have cool explosions, and we have a fight that will probably be enjoyed most by Dragon Ball Z fans. I won't say anything more about that, because that's starting to go into the spoiler territory. As far as adding to the Marvel Cinematic Universe goes, this movie doesn't really add a great deal, or at least it doesn't really add a great deal that I noticed. We get lots of cameos, we have Stan Lee again and Howard the Duck again, but aside from that, it doesn't really seem to be building up much more to what we've already seen on the horizon. However, it does do quite a lot to develop the Guardians of the Galaxy characters and, well, I think pretty much every single major character in the original movie, and even some of the minor characters, really had quite a large level of character development. If anything, Chris Pratt's character Star-Lord actually had the least amount of character development throughout the movie, which I'll get to in just a second in the spoiler territory. And that's actually where we are right now, so spoiler alert to everyone, if you've not seen the movie, this is the spoiler alert, and when I stop saying the word spoiler alert, spoiler alert, there will be the spoilers, so this is your alert. Spoiler alert. So, firstly, some of the really cool things. I was quite happy that almost half of the trailer was essentially the first five minutes of the movie, so after that there was a lot more to be expected. Although, unfortunately, the other half of the trailer was actually towards the grand finale of the movie, so I sort of wish they hadn't shown that. I enjoyed the introduction of Star-Lord's dad, that was rather cool, and I managed to avoid pretty much all the spoilers about him, so I didn't really know that he was an evil bastard until about halfway through the movie, where I started to think this character seems a little bit shady. The showdown between the two of them, which is what I was talking about earlier when I said Dragon Ball Z, was really cool, but I'm not too happy with the end of it. You see, in the film, Star-Lord finds out that he's part Celestial, which is what his dad is, and his dad's powers, and actually his dad, is linked to the heart of a planet, which is actually his dad, and Star-Lord himself is able to use some superpowers by drawing on the planet. That's all well and good, that's a rather cool setup. However, in order to stop his father who's planning to take over the universe, Star-Lord has to destroy the planet, which is his dad, and is also where he's drawing power from, as I mentioned a couple of seconds ago. And the issue I found with this is the entire movie is basically Star-Lord finding out he has superpowers, and then Star-Lord no longer having superpowers. I mean, I suppose there can be something said for him willingly giving up his powers to, for the greater good, but he was always a good person, so that's not really much character development. And I kind of feel that him not getting to keep any of his powers sort of just brings the movie full circle, and kind of means that his character didn't really develop much. It would have been cool to see at the end of the movie him opening his hand a little bit and there being some energy flicking around or something, 
something that at least showed that his character had actually gone somewhere from point A to B, rather than going from point A in a round circle back to point A again. This is admittedly a very minor gripe, I don't know much about Star-Lord's character, maybe he does end up with superpowers, maybe he doesn't, I just thought it would be a cool little addition. And as I said, pretty much every single other character in the film got meaningful character development of their own, so it's not like the film was short on character development. Aside from that, as I said, it's a very, very funny movie with really cool action scenes, is probably one of the best sci-fi films so far to come out this year. I mean, here's hoping Star Wars will beat it, but at the moment I think it's probably got the mantle, and I definitely highly suggest you watch it. I mean, really, it's a Marvel movie, so chances are if it's your thing, you're going to see it regardless. And so with all of that said and done, as always, thanks for watching this extremely late or extremely early upload, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.